Okay, so we are getting ready to go live. Get started. All right, Leela, so I'm ready whenever you are. We can move on to the first slide. All right, well, hello everybody and welcome to the fourth um, artist talk in our Collecting Our Voices in the Caribbean Diaspora series. My name is Katrina Cartwright. I am the Education and Outreach Manager at the National Art Gallery in the Bahamas. And I will be your host tonight, your moderator tonight. So the Museums Association of the Caribbean and the special MACPOVA Collecting Committee is thrilled to be hosting the online exhibition entitled Collecting Our Voices in the Car Caribbean Diaspora. So if you have not seen it, we do encourage you to go online to the MAC website and take a look at it. The exhibition features work by artists from the English, French, Spanish, and Dutch speaking Caribbean with representation from 10 countries, the Bahamas, Cayman Islands, French Guyana, Guadeloupe, Guyana, Haiti, Jamaica, Martinique, Puerto Rico, and Suriname. Responding to the pandemic and its impact on the creative sector, the project brings together voices from across the region to illuminate through creative expression how people in the Caribbean and its diaspora are living and moving through the, this crisis. The exhibition will stay online for eight months through November 26, 2021, and will move over and will, over the course of its run, be screened at various partner institutions throughout the region to be announced. And tonight I have five artists with me from the Bahamas and Suriname. So we have Kenneth Flaters, Shondell Horton, Ronaldo Class, Didi Brown, and Eugene Elira, who will be talking about their work with us tonight. We encourage you to just listen as they speak and just get ready to ask a lot of questions in our Q&A section at the end. So we are going to start with our first artist, Dee Dee Brown. Next slide. So just a little bit about Dee Dee. So Danielle Dee Dee Brown um, from Free, was born in Freeport, Grand Bahama, in the Bahamas. And Dee Dee is an interdisciplinary artist whose work who works in painting, photography, mixed media, sculpture, and installation. She has worked as a freelance artist and photographer since 2020, 2010, dividing her time between commercial art and design and photography projects while developing her, sorry, while developing her fine art practice respectively. She currently resides in Spanish Wells Eleuthero where she works from a home-based studio. Her inspiration comes from her surrounding environment of the Bahama Islands, color trends, graphic design, film and music, fashion and pop culture, editorial and portrait photography. This guides her to produce works that are visually bold, detailed and colorful. Her work is very often figurative with a strong focus on female and androgynous forms. More recently, she has been very interested in experimenting with her use of materials, particularly cut paper and aluminum. Through social experiences and observation, her curiosity has taken her to investigate themes related to human behavior and existence, specifically social stigma surrounding gender roles, sexual and racial identity in the Bahamas, and more broadly throughout the Caribbean. Her hope is to use her ability as an artist to create beautiful and meaningful work that can shed light on these topics and ignite further dialogue. So welcome Didi, thank you for joining us tonight. 
Hi, Katrina. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Melina, can we move on to the next slide? And there we are. So Didi, tell us a bit about this piece. I know there's um, so much to say, wow. Um, yeah, so I started this work um, probably at the end of 2019, beginning of 2020. Um, I have a habit with these pieces to, I screen print the C fan as a halo, which is the gold halo that you're seeing around um, the two figures. Um, and then I end up with like, what is a hollow or blank face. Um, and I kind of just sit with that and ponder what it's going to become. And so it, I really do a lot of starting and stopping with these types of pieces. Um, but in this instance, I was really interested in um, taking like a classic portrait and profile, um, similar to what you would see um, you know, taken as like a mugshot um, and creating a piece from those two perspectives. Um, and so that's how they developed. And I think as time went on, as the pandemic sort of broke out at the beginning of last year, um, these, you know, I'd already started these pieces, but stopped them and just that sort of like fueled so much energy that I was then able to put into these pieces, you know, um, working very remotely, um, you know, one can get kind of caught in isolation. Um, and I think it's important when you do have that alone time to, I kind of, I think it's important to tap into uh, your own demons and try to battle with them, if you will. And so, um, you know, hearing all the, you know, social media noise, if you will, can be a bit uh, daunting and so I really often turn to my art practice as a way of trying to work through my own thoughts and my own emotions so um, you know the title of this piece is we hurt we bur we burn we bloom and so essentially it's about taking you know that powerlessness that fear that pain if you will and then getting it out and so you know you can see that particularly in the portraits expression you know there's there's angst there's fear in in her expression you know there's there's blood coming out of her nose so she's battling with something um and then when you move into like the burning I kind of think of that as like all the emotions you know particularly anger which is usually covering up other things fear and so I, I think the bold colors are really kind of, and the red is really speaking to that, those, those feelings, those emotions. Um, and then of course, as like you move through it, then there's, then there's the healing, um, the blooming, which is the growth and the healing. And so, you know, I took these images of, these are actually moon blooms that my parents photographed and sent to me because, you know, we were in constant dialogue, them being in Nassau, me being in Spanish Wells. And, so I often try to draw from what's around me and, you know, imagery. And for me, that's home and from coming from my parents. So I really wanted to, it's a beautiful image of these um, cactus flowers that bloom at night. So it's hopeful. And I wanted to, um, so that's why they have such a major presence in these two pieces. Um, and then that coupled with the, the sea fan is like one of my signature things that I'm off, I often work with the intricacies of such a beautiful, intricate yet delicate um, coral from, you know, uh, that we have that often floats up on the surface and comes to the shore. And then I end up picking it up and photographing it. And I just, I'm kind of like obsessed with texture. And so there's like this fragility, but strength to these, corals that I also that I wanted to sort of use to embody these pieces and create this halo, if you will, which kind of again speaks to the healing of the piece. Um, and yeah, and so that's kind of really what the representation is about um, for me. And you know, this is oh, it always starts on an individual level. Um, but then I think 
when I, in talking to people who have observed these pieces and getting feedback, you can see how it resonates and people can sort of tap into their own struggles and see, see that in the work. And then it, that kind of creates that dialogue that I've been talking about, you know, when we're able to talk about the issues surrounding us, like particularly with this pandemic and, you know, of course, like the structures within our societies, you know, facing like gender issues and um, uh, whatnot. So that's really uh, my intention is to sort of, it always starts, you know, with myself. And then as I move through the pieces and talk with people, I, I get that, that feedback and can, um, you know, and then it's all about re relatability really. And I think it's, art is an expression that allows us to create these dialogues, um, particularly for me, because I'm not very articulate with words. So this is how, for me, how it has to come out. So that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Dee Dee. Um, wow, a yeah. lot to think about. I'm sure we're going to get lots of questions. Uh, yeah. So we'll, we're going to move on to our second artist. So her name is Shondell Horton. She graduated from Noller Hadaman Art Academy in Paramaribo, Suriname in 2011. Born in Guyana, Shondell moved to Suriname with her family when she was eight years old. As a child, she was already fond of drawing and she was introduced to her first books on art while visiting her grandmother. In high school, her drive to draw lessened somewhat, but ultimately several important events in her personal life led Shondell to choose what was important and what had always brought her joy, drawing, painting, art. She enrolled at the Noller Hadaman Art Academy. Her specialization was experimenting Shondell quickly developed a style of her own. Striking in her work is the use of warm brown and ochre tones and of collages, a technique she became acquainted with in the lessons of guest lectures from the Garrett Ratzfeld Academy in the Netherlands. In her collages, in which she often uses paper that she recycles from used tea bags, she usually incorporates subtle elements from Guyana, the country where she was born. In 2013, Shondell received a residency opportunity that allowed her to explore the extensive art scene in Miami, Florida, in the USA. In her recent work, the artist has moved beyond the subjects related to her bond with her country of birth and has been focusing more on the portrayal of human emotions and environmental issues. So welcome, Shondell. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, thank you. Um... So, yeah. So, so let's move on to um, one of your pieces. This is called Inspiration 2020. So Shonda, tell us about this piece um, and how it connects to your wider body of work. Um, this piece was uh, created for an um, exhibition uh, for the gallery, the Ready Text Art Gallery. Um, and um, uh, I wanted to create a piece that was um, connected to what was going on at the moment. Um, and I came across, uh, I'd come across the work of Carla, uh, Freda Kahlo earlier. And so I, um, I thought there was a lot of similarities in um, her situation and, and the isolation that uh, we were all dealing with. So, um, that's why I uh, chose her image as a part of, uh, of the painting. Um, she was often ill and, um, and due to her illness, confined to her home or to bed. I had to deal with a lot of uh, physical and emotional pain that she uh, turned into something positive. Into her, she put them into her paintings and it, um, it was a way of expressing herself and uh, it also um, had a positive effect on her career as an artist. Um, for me, I think that uh, we as artists have the ability to transform the negative things around us, negative things um, 
internally as well as uh, as outside of ourselves. And um, yeah, she's a, a, an example that we can use as a inspiration to do that because um, we all have the ability, but uh, sometimes we forget it due to our situations. Um, the painting is um, also made up of tea bags. Um, the tea bags, um, I use them in my work because they, yeah, they have a, a link to my heritage, but they also, um, the tones and the colors also help to create the, the feeling that I want to um, communicate through my work. So um, that's why I use the tea bags in most of my work, all, yeah, all of my work. Um, I also, in this painting, um, use little appliques to make her mask, and that sort of uh, created the image um, of it being embroidered. Because uh, I also do, um, <clears throat> I also use embroidery in the other work that I create. So this was a way to incorporate two. So um, yeah, that's basically it about the painting. Thank you, Shandel. Um, yeah. So I'm sure you're going to get a lot of questions about from our audience about how you paint with those tea bags. Um, so, and also how and how you're able to really manipulate those colors. Um, so yeah. thank you very much for sharing that. We're going to move on to our third artist. Welcome. Next slide, please. So our third artist is Eugene Elyro, who is a Bahamian writer of Haitian descent. He draws inspiration from the commonality of the diaspora. His submitted poems center around loss and being hopeful and how in the midst of a pandemic, grief cannot be displaced, but must figure out a new way to mourn. So welcome, Eugene. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for the introduction, Katrina. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, and and you're a little, and you're going to be um, doing something a little different because you are a writer and you have a poem that you're going to be reading to us tonight. Um, so very excited to hear it and um, and really learn more about your work. Oh, wow. Did not come prepared to read it, but I wait for you. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> the piece I'm reading is titled Prayers, The Second Stage Dry Again. Unapologetic. When the mask slips off and metaphors for foundation spits falsehood of what it is to be a rock, don't apologize. Wax poetic. Praise refix the dream bladder. Praise scrimp the walk of katadas. Praise every half cock remedy to fight high blood and keep you up stay. Right, tongue your experience. Praise the fist that forms only to catch a cough. Strong as the way to live is, is the mind. But these bodies know their limit. They bow at the shrine of peace. Time has no structure, but for a minute, how much meaning it places in the ice pole's weight. For a second, we feel ash in the fire ends. Thank you for reading that for us, Eugene. So tell us a bit more about this piece and, you know, and your work in general. Uh, funny. This, this piece is something I, Yes, I started working on about three, four years ago. I have this method yet. Yeah, I'll probably look at a newspaper headline or flip to a book and look at the title or refrain from a chorus and the language grabs me. I try, try to use that as inspiration to write, write a poem. And I think with this piece right here, it was a church hymn, hymn and the line was, dead will not find me afraid, it's dying. And 
to me, that just sounded poetic. And initially, that was the point. And I wanted to write a song and just to practice writing poems. So over the years, I just try and write a poem, song with that exact same line. And each year, it, it mutates. And I say, you know what? That line, I have to tame, but I can do something on my own. And that's where the praise, the second state dragon came about. And what I love about this piece, it incorporated everything I love about writing. It sounded more natural. It doesn't sound Shakespearean or old school, but in a sense, it is a sonnet. Despite having 15 lines, every other quality from the rhyme schemes, having a turn, I desert, I, well, I think it's the, the first eight lines the, after the four lines, everything. I try to follow every form and twist it to fit my meaning. The, yeah, by that, what I'm trying to say is like the, 15 line, which stops it from being a sauna, it's a flash in the fire. And so I intentionally wanted the form itself to add more meaning to the poem. So every time you cut the poem, I wanted to stand on its own. And just like, you, and I think the best way to say is it could be scrutinized. You could look at it and say, you want to teach a poem? This is a poem. You can't argue with it. It has, it's at the lines, it rhymes, it's a poem. I think because I talk poetry differently and I didn't per se, go to school to be a poet, I wanted to make sure what I do could be classified as a poem. So I always find myself experimenting with forms, meters. Like this poem right here, I think I counted all the syllables. Most lines you'll find have 10 lines, just because I love the way it looks on page. Almost looks like a box shape. I don't know why, but visually I'm always drawn to it. And I always find myself writing sonnets over and over and over. Right, and, and, I, mean, I, and I have to ask, if I'm, if this is really, when you think about um, the times we're in now with the pandemic, with COVID, and this really speaks to a lot of um, what we're very familiar with, right? You know, um, you have one side of the coin where people are rushing to the doctor and looking for pharmaceutical medications. And you have the other side where everybody's trying to find a home remedy. So um, can you speak to that a bit more? Especially, I mean, I'm reading this wax poetic praise reflects the dream bladder praise strength to walk with a catheter. I mean, it's pretty powerful. I, uh, funny thing is that actually started off as a joke. I think when I was at work, a coworker of mine, we were speak, speaking about when we near in 40s, because they talk about colonoscopy and all these scary stuff. And he said, as a man, there's a male perspective that we don't do those things. Men are expected to be strong, but think about going to the doctor and falling sick. Yeah, it always seems a sign of weakness growing up. And then as you get older and you watch the older men in community, they do get sick, they do get high blood pressure and to see them survive through it, the things they made light up in front of, you see them succumb to it and they encourage you. How much time I had my father and all the older guys just tell me, eat right, you gotta do this. You don't wanna be my age and do that. So all the things we thought made us less of a man, I, I realized as I got older, there's no shame and being weak. There's no shame in needing to go to the hospital. There's no shame in wanting to take care of yourself. And you see that survivor's instinct. You want to survive, so you will do it all. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and yeah, I think um, there's a lot of that we can all, all connect to. So I know you. we have several of your poems um, here, but I know you want to concentrate on praise. So we do encourage our audience if you, to just glance through a couple of them, um, if you can, before we move on to our next artist. And um, so let's go, let's move to the next slide, please. Yes. I think the next yeah, is comorbidity is funny just to tie it a poem because of pandemic that's a word you never used to hear but every other minute you're in comorbidities and I just fell in love with the word 
And recently, <laughs> during the pandemic, my father actually passed. And the experience was, was just different. You couldn't grieve the normal way because we had a law, basically, you couldn't allow more than 10 people to the funeral. You couldn't have a service in church. So it's really about finding a new way to grieve. And at his funeral, one of his closest friends, the security stopped him at the, at the gate. And he couldn't go and grieve. And when he went back to the house and he told us the story, he had to get an anecdote about something him and his, my father did. And I sit back and yeah, wait, I wasn't even born yet. So here's the man who knew someone longer than I was alive, wasn't allowed to greet or mourn properly. And I like, as selfish as I was saying, that's my father, I should be grieved, I shouldn't be one with someone else. I realized a lot of people are going through this experience because of the pandemic. We all need room to grieve, space to grieve. And we will find during the pandemic that we have to find creative ways to do it. So for me, I just want to acknowledge that fact and this is one of my way to grieve. Thank you, Eugene. Um, like you said, we many of us can relate. Um, so let's move on to our next artist. Um, so, our, so the fourth artist in our lineup tonight is Kenneth Bladers. Um, he received his education at the Newey School for BL Den, Houston, in Suriname and at the Edna Manley College of Visual and Performing Arts in Jamaica. He works as an artist, and until 2015, he, sorry, was an art, art teacher at the Nola Hadaman Art Academy in Suriname. Players is greatly inspired by elements and events from daily life in the multicultural Surinamese society. He also finds great pleasure in painting peaceful and pristine landscapes from our rich tropical rainforests. He is unequivocally attracted to the beauty of Surinamese nature and also has a special affinity for the old and historical. He is known to regularly incorporate historical themes and materials in his work. He occasionally repurposes shutters and doors from old deserted or condemned wooden buildings into meaningful works of art. The artist is also quite famous for his impressive large scale paintings, sometimes historical, in which he depicts popular spots in Paramaribo's downtown area. As an artist fond of experimenting, Blader's works in several materials, styles and techniques and has become quite well known for incorporating mahogany extract and natural palm fibers in his work. So I'm going to stop there. Um, actually, can we make the slide just a little smaller? So, oh, sorry, that's much bigger. Thank you. Um, so I'm gonna stop there. So Kenneth, welcome. Thank you so much Thank for you. joining us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. It's um, an honor. I say it's an honor to be in your show. It's an honor to have you here. Um, so, we are going to be looking at one of your pieces and I'm really excited to learn more about your process and the work and the content because um, you've been doing this for a very long time. Yes, that's true. Yeah. So can we move to the next slide, please? Ah, there we are. So Kenneth, can you tell us a bit more about this piece and your work in general? Yes, this, uh, this piece is a, uh, 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 it's what I, I uh, had in mind, you know, and it's for years I, I, I have this uh, idea to make this uh, work because I myself, was living in this uh, yard, you know, and it's a very, very nice uh, way of living with all of different people. You know, they came, the people who live in these uh, uh, houses came from different places in Paramaribo or, or, or districts. And it came, they come in Paramaribo to 
have a better life and they <clears throat> try they don't know nobody and they're coming and they show some people are so themselves finding a place to stay and they come in these houses mostly the owner of this house live in the front you know and the other people live in the back so mo mostly what's happened is that the difference the difference of of so many people of ethnic uh, background become family and they live in those yards you know uh, what i will tell you in this piece is that i want to show you the way of living and the word mampere of this painting means good morning in japanese is 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 from indonesia they they sense from um indonesia who lives in suriname but what i want to show you also is that they came together because the, the person on the background walking with a a, a a bucket going to the bathroom mostly in those yards the, the bathrooms are in the back of the yard you know and so he going and see the woman is busy hanging clothes she was the clothes a japanese woman with a child on her side that's the way they 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 uh they carry their child if they are busy to do something and he going on the back is in the morning and he passed through and say mamper mamper that's what i say is hello good morning in japanese you know so what i want to say also is that you learn from others and he learned the language because we're living together on the on the the the, the complex the yard they learn also the way of living of other people other uh, people from uh, other backgrounds you know and it's 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 a it's a uh a, uh a, a, a way of living as as early as i say and it's nice they 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 become family you know you 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 saw the uh, uh the person and what's also it's that um the uh, respect for each other you know it's missing this time now but the respect was it passed through in the morning or even in the afternoon you see that your neighbor or or a friend staying there and say hello to her but what i want to show you is that uh the language that you use is a japanese language it you learn the language he, he, he know how to speak the language we learn from each other we help each other so that is um, i want to show you in uh, uh uh this painting you know and the way the people are living in in uh, those yards you know uh, normally as i say the uh, the the owner of the, the yard is mostly he lives in the front at a very big house and the other houses in the back are a little smaller and everything is happening on this yard you know your chicken yeah you have dog you have and mostly what important is is respect for each other you know and that that's very important to have a respect for each other and help each other when you're in need you know so uh i i um, i uh, i think if you don't have the experience you can you can you can make those painting because the feeling and the, the colors of the the the, the houses uh, the, the the yard itself and the atmosphere and totally i want to uh, uh, paint and let people see and get the feeling of life in those yards you know that's what i want to mostly let uh, people see Right. Thank you, Kenneth. I think um, okay. I think many of us living in the Car in Caribbean countries can relate to to many people living in a yard together and um, yeah. and learning from each other in communities. Um, yeah. So something that really has um, been impacted by COVID. You're afraid oh, to yeah. even talk to your neighbor, right? Yeah, and that's very sad on this moment, this time, you know, because we are we are. Uh, very lively with each other we 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 talk with each other we 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 help each other but in uh, now this time is very difficult because uh, of uh, 
the pandemic. You know, you can't, I mean, go everywhere. You have to make sure you prepare yourself to going in town or wherever you have to go. Yeah. Now, thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing and giving and telling us that, um, giving us um, some all that insight into your work, into this piece, into your work. Um, yeah. So we're going to move on to our final artist for tonight before we move on to the Q and A section. Um, so we're going to. So our final artist is Ronaldo Class. He is an artist whose work reflects his deep concern for nature and the environment. Educated first in Suriname at the newly school for Bielden Kumsten and subsequently in Jamaica at the Edna Manley College of the Visual and Performing Arts, Ronaldo has also gained extensive work and or an artist in residence experience in the Netherlands, China, the USA, French Guyana, and also at the Tembi Art Studio in Mango, Suriname. Before his retirement in 2014, Ronaldo was the director of the Nola Hadaman Art Academy, Art Academy in Paramaribo, and also the chairman of the FBAS. With his work, class urges all of mankind to live in respectful harmony with nature. He does so by creating colorful compositions with acrylic paint on canvas or on paper in which man, animals, and nature are peacefully intertwined. Ronaldo Class considers it his responsibility as an artist and a human being to convey an important social message to the rest of the world. In addition to his environmentally inspired figurative paintings, Ronaldo Class is also known to create striking abstract artworks on canvas as well as on paper. 2019 was a busy year for the artist as he spent several months in French Guyana as an artist in residence in Saint Laurent du Maroni, and also had a large exhibition at Ready Text Art Gallery. Um, so welcome, Ronaldo. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you, uh, Ms. Catherine, to, to host us as uh, artist of the Suriname Paramaribo Ready Text Art Gallery. It's very nice to have such a such beautiful encounter with uh, other artists from the region, the Caribbean. And I think it's very nice. Uh, so as you said, let's, I'm... Mm -hmm. yeah. So continue, I was going to say, let's move on to your work. So just yes. tell me a bit more uh, about you and the work and your practice. Okay, my work is uh, before I was like a car mechanic, uh, young, 17, 70 year old, but uh, I find somehow my hand will very dirty, very oily, and so so I move on. Uh, my uncle, my uncles recognized that uh, I, the artist in me, so I went to the Nola Hatman, and several years I became an artist, and from my deep concern of of the environment i start to pick that up i start to pick the pick up the the colonial houses uh pay them in, paint them in daytime pay them in nighttime to see the different variety of of color of uh yes of color and slowly i because uh in in, in some year in 19, 1991 there was a there was a destruction, destruction of our environment because, because we are one of, one of the borders of, of, of the South America, Brasilia. And the, the cutting of the, of, the, of the jungle, the environment was so intense that I have, uh, then at that time I hear also of Chico Mendoza, one of the, one of the activists. And it moved me to concentrate more on the environment, the animal in the jungle, you know, the people, the Amerindian, uh, that take me to be more the deep concern about what is going on in our 
planet, not only Suriname. And so I started to paint uh, uh, that kind of, uh, uh, that brought me to uh, take a deeper concert, more of our, our nature. So, um, and somehow as you, you read on my CV, I, start, I used to teach in France, Guyana. Uh, and last year, I, rec I recognized the 13th of uh, March. I was in France, Guyana, and I recognized that uh, the border will be closed on the 14th of, uh, of March. So I just arrived and just I have to move on because if I went away like one day, one day longer, then I will be in lockdown. And lockdown, yeah, it's, it's so weird because we never dealing with such a situation before. So I came back home and after all, we, had, we was in a lockdown. And that thing, you know, has moved you, uh, inspired you somehow because it's a, like, it's a, it's, it was like a bad, like a bad pipe. But I used that type, the pipe to create uh, something because like, uh, we never we never have these two dealing worldwide with a mouth and nose uh, cap, you know. Um, less of the people that work in a hospital and some chemical situation, but now everybody dealing with. And my con my concert of my painting, the first painting I did is like, okay, uh, I used the people that. Uh, have the concept of nature and uh, and also the the bird um, it's a it's a gold a gold thief you know I combine the gold thief with the with the human you know it's like everything has to protect every living being has to be protect so if we have to use like the nose mouth tap that means, well, in my thought, the, the animal has to go the same way to otherwise they die. If we're gonna die, they, they die first. And then after, you know? So I make my painting basic on that. You, if you look at the painting, you see the, the Poesi, the, the gold thief, the name, exact name is Poesi. You know that a pick everything that that is shining and because we we cons our concert of our our animal that we live in together i show a way to protect you know so really it doesn't it doesn't happen it's a, it's, it was just a small a serious joke but uh but I, I, I think if we have to use a, a nose mouth cap, then the animal who have to protect to. But how are you gonna how are you gonna reach the animal that doesn't um, came in contact with uh, people? Only only the one that you have in the zoo, maybe you can do something with. But the the rest not. And I I worry because. Uh, we have problem with the with the with the sea, the oil that people uh, uh, use as uh, as industrial, you know, and the fish in the sea and the and the coral and all these things have the influence. The sky, the bird, you know, because of all this industry, is also the same problem. And. If you look at the, if you look at the Brasilia, Australia, and USA, and so on, you know, fire attack everything. Even the, even the, the animal in the, in the, in the jungle that doesn't have anywhere to go, just stay there, and you know, it's a cruel situation. And for me, I pick all those things to uh, inspire me uh, to make something out of it that like, well, this situation has been happened. 
and it's it's not a it's not a it's not a really nice situation. But as human as human being and you're concerned, you go deeply in it, you know. And yes, well, we continue because this this is not the final step. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ronaldo. Thank you um, for giving us that, all that insight. I mean, and really helping us to see the connection between um, the connection you're making between how our the importance of taking care of the environment, um, and of course how that how that connects to us, um, and also thinking about what's happening directly around you. Um, so we are. So that that brings us to the end of our. Um, panelists presentations so we're going to be moving into the q a part of our um of our talk so we already have one question in i will read it very quickly this is coming from david singh so this is a question for sean dell um, i really like your work which i've seen at the ready text gallery can you explain a little more your choice of tea bags in your work? What is behind it? Um, so, Shondell, unmute your mic. Yes. Um, the tea bags um, are symbolic. Uh, they are uh, they form a symbolic link to where I come from because I was born in British Guyana. I was British Guyana in the past, but um, the, the tea bags are linked to that part of my heritage. Heritage, and um, they also have uh, colors that are warm, and um, yeah, it, it's it's a link to uh, sort of an emotional link. To where I came from, it was the feeling that it uh, it, uh, it creates in the paintings. Um, uh, I find them pleasant, and and they yeah they they help to express whatever it is that I'm uh, expressing in the work, in the piece that I'm working on. So that's why that's the main reason that I use them. They also have a lot of texture that. It also is, is positive uh, for the paintings. So yeah, that's it. That's, that's the main reasons for using the tea bags. Okay. Thank you, Shandel. Um, so I guess we can open up um, discussions to our panelists as well. If you have questions for each other, um, we also have a bit more time for more questions if anybody in our audience wants to ask them. So I guess I have a, a general question for all of the artists who are here. We've been talking about um, COVID, we've been talking about um, of the pandemic happening while um, also so many other um, catastrophes are happening at the same time. Ronaldo spoke about environmental, man-made environmental disasters. Um, we're also talking about because of COVID, because of the pandemic, that loss of human connection, that loss of um, really having to work hard to find that sense of community. Do you find that during this time, your work has changed in any way? And if it has changed, in what way has it changed? Um, I, I, can, I can go into it. Yeah, dive right in. Okay, the first, like the first day, because the first day it happened, I was in France, Guyana, and I didn't know what was going on. You know, it's just like a war. You are somewhere, you have to stay there, you cannot move if you have, or you have to move fast, otherwise you're gonna be st uh, stuck there. Yeah, and for me was, uh, the first day for me was a very panicking situation because it's not what you, we, we used to 
be it or move on. Um, you know, so uh, it was a it was a very crazy encounter with the with that day. And and from that day, of course, life will be never the same again. You you will make all all other beautiful painting, uh, but COVID affect you somehow. Uh, you know, by because the first day of COVID, we never take off people die or gonna die or people you know, uh, gonna uh, affect the other, you know, it was just COVID. And as we were moving on, you see the situation getting wrong and where, you know, you have to take injection now to survive a uh, situation. So um, that's what I say, we don't know what's uh, gonna be in the future, but right now we have to dealing with COVID. And, at co and COVID, Make sure that you don't have that life that you have before. Now again, you you have to live with COVID. That's my. Thank point. you, Ronaldo. Thank you, Ronaldo. Um, anybody else wants to dive in? Okay. To piggyback on something I heard. Didi mentioned that, that space in isolation, it actually allows your creativity grow. For me, I would say I'm a part-time poet. It's not a full-time job. It's not what I do. So because of the pandemic, it gave me time to actually reflect and actually to think because some of those pieces were ideas I just had, but I never took time to write down because I'm busy with life. Because of the pandemic, it gave you opportunity to slow down, just reflect, and just tap into your own potential. And for me, I like to observe and what I write is what I see. And I just react to this pandemic. We're well, even into history. We read about the Spanish flu and all these plagues, but you don't really experience it. So you don't think of it as much. Just to see us even through the pandemic and see what COVID is doing. Like, at first, everyone thought ah, after 30 days, it's over. Everything's back to normal. And then we're a year and a half into it. And we're just seeing things, just steady progress in the wrong direction. It's like, where you have been through history, someone's gonna write about this in the book talking about this COVID plague, just like the Spanish flu. I, I think it's just crazy. Yep, definitely living history. Um, question is what will be written? So thank you, thank you, Eugene. Um, Shondell, Didi, Kenneth. You want to jump on the question? Um, yeah, uh, for me personally, um, the COVID situation, I think it has a, has had an effect on my work. Um, it's um, caused me to think about um, what it is that I want to do with my work. Um, uh, yeah, what's important to me and um, on which base um, I, I should uh, continue making my work. So um, what are the topics and how do I um, intend to express the themes that interest me, but on a deeper level? Didi, I saw you unmute your mic. Yeah, I was um, just gonna say, um, before the pandemic, I was sort of bouncing, you know, from project to project, um, most of which were commercial art or photography. My fine art um, always seemed to get put on the back burner. So this became an opportunity to really dive into my fine art practice, put it on the front burner and just, tap into it and explore it and you know take the time to to ex experiment with my use of material um and then being confined to um your home space you're you're forced as well to sort of start to look at all the details around you like in your environment you know so my perspective of my home environment changed as well i started to see a lot more 
And I think slowly but surely all of those uh, details, they're, they're coming more and more into the work, you know? So it's like just a layering of all of this observation from what's directly around you. Um, so that's definitely how this time has impacted my work, for sure. Thank you, Didi. Kenneth, do you want to give it a try? Oh, just unmute your mic. Okay, I think I can unmute you. Yes. Yes. Oh, there we are. Yeah. Uh, Kofu can stop an artist. If you are a painter, any, any artist, any person who is busy with art, you know, any serious art, COVID can stop you. I mean, it could, it could you, you can move every, everywhere, you can move, you have to deal with it, but you have to do your work. You know, you know that COVID exists, but it can stop you. You know, you and that's the that's 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 the 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 power that you have in mind. Not be afraid to COVID. Do your work. Uh, uh, I mean, protect yourself. You know, as the government tell you how to do what to do, and you you are you as a person have to know that that you have to protect yourself. But do your job. Your 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 make your painting. Make your, those who dancing and, and, and writing and do the thing, let them do the thing. You know, I, I, I know that a lot of things are changing you now in the world or, or in, the, in your, 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 your environment, but what you have in mind and what you wanna do, keep on doing that, you know, and that keep you stronger. That's it. Yes. But, you know, some of the best art is made in the face of adversity. Mm -hmm. So we have, so we have a, another couple of other questions coming in um, from, so we have here, how, how do you survive as artists as there are less possibilities to show your work and meet with your audience? Are you still productive or are you taking a break? So I guess the first part of that question is, how do you survive as artists as there are, as there are less possibilities to show your work and meet with your audience. Mm -hmm. Who uh, wants to take uh, it? I take it. As an artist, you are you have to deal with a desire, desire of 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 what you want to do, what 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 you want to create. You know, that's the first thing get into you to your mind. The like money to live and so I think your your art taking the first place and the rest, if you sell something, you're lucky. <laughs> but for me, as myself, I think also most of the artists, they go for the inspire, what, what, what is inspire us and how to deal, how to create it, how to show people what move you. I think that's, that's the most important part. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ronaldo. Yeah. Did anybody else want to um, to give an answer to that question? We have some more coming in. I was just going to say, you know, we're we're called creatives for a reason. So in this time when things get tough, you got to be, you got to get creative and figure out a way to put yourself out there. Uh, get on social media. Um, I found myself doing a lot of research about residencies and. I mean, and different um, opportunities to um, put your work forward, this being one of them. So I think, like you said, um, adversity sort of creates that drive. And uh, yeah, you just, when you're challenged, you need to respond to it, or at least I do. And that's where, you know, that motivation comes from. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dady. All right, mm -hmm. so another question. Have you found that, this is for generally for anybody who wants to grab it, have you found that people have been more appreciative of art in the past year, um, seeing it as almost therapeutic? So, but, so yeah. Sorry. yeah. But uh, people, that, people that, that love art, you know, love music, love dance, 
you know, uh, in an artistic way, they will never change. They go together with the artists. They like to follow the artists, what they're doing. And we, we inspire them and they, they inspire us. Otherwise, you will create something just for yourself in the first place. And then you, the gallery is very important for us to show our work. Like the one year lockdown with COVID, still the digital world uh, make contact with, uh, with, the, with the art lover. You know, so I don't think uh, too much has changed. Too much, well, well, many things has changed because uh, uh, exhibition, you know, cannot show the way it used to show before. So the next answer, the next uh, answer of the of that situation is the, digit, uh, the digital world, and th that that make great effort because I see I see also how many effort. A ready technique to promote this art uh, with the with the digital world, you know. So I right. think it's a it's a great deal. And I guess the second part of that question was: Do people do you find that people have been finding it more art more therapeutic, and if that would been a driver um, for more people beginning to appreciate art? I think I think yes. We not we have we not only focus on the oldest people, also the kids. You know, uh, as it, uh, uh, I'm the chairman of the Noel Hartman Art uh, Children Art Academy, uh, and we have just we're gonna just have a, a summer a summer school for them. Now we just oh, we just mentioned that. And we we can deal with certain minimal of uh, uh, children because we have to protect them also. And in two three days, one week, that was the 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 amount of people to get in, to come in get in. It was full. So you cannot help. You cannot take any more than you can. Uh, you can uh, you can afford. Mm -hmm. in space yeah. so I think the, the it's, it's the same question dealing with all the people uh, art lover but, and also the children because you cannot, you cannot talk about art and forget about the kids because they are, they are the future and, and, and the art is also for them as a therapy you know they can they can explode the, the, the energy, they can explode their feeling on paper and with color, you know? So I think this is, a, this is it. We have, to, we have to be conscious of those situations. Right. Thank you, Ronaldo. Um, did anybody else want to add to that question? All right, so we have two more questions coming in. So this question is for Shondell. Why is your use of collage important in your process? Um, collage, the, as, um, is it the, the total of the painting or, or is it specifically about the tea bags? Um, it's just very generally about collage. Just collage. Um, collage is a, is for me, it's a direct way of, um, fastest way of, of, of expressing whatever is, um, um, whatever I need to express at the moment that I'm creating, that I got an idea or, or, or yeah, what, whatever thoughts I, I want to um, express. It's easier for me, to, uh, it's faster to me to do it as a collage rather than um, a painting from scratch. Thank you, Shondell. So um, this is for Didi. So um, this person says, I'm also interested in why collage is an aspect of Didi Brown's process. 
Maybe she could explain some of that aspect and her use. Sure, yeah, I did forget to get into the collage part of it. Um, I think I'm really interested in several different techniques, screen printing, um, photo transfers, um, pattern. And so collage is my way of bringing all of those um, different elements together. I kind of like the challenge of taking all of those elements and putting them into one piece because you can end up with so many different textures and layers and it will look different depending on the order that you go in. So I'm always playing around um, with my, my use of uh, technique and the way I then collage those techniques together. Um, and yeah, it, it's just continuously I, challenging me to um, play and I guess break through with new ideas. That, that's a big reason why I use it in my work. Okay, thank you, Dee. Sure. All right. So I think that may be all of our questions so far. Um, so if there aren't any more questions, um, oops, sorry, before I continue, let me just make sure I saw a new message pop up. Ah, here we are. So how can we purchase, so this is for everybody. How can we purchase your work online? For the artists that are uh, with the Ready Next Gallery, that's through the gallery, uh, gallery's website. Right. So for the Surinamese artists, it'd be through the Ready Text Gallery website. Yeah. Um, can you give us the gallery website, please, Shondell? Um, I'll send a link. All right, and um, Dee Dee and Eugene, how about you? I actually, at this moment, have a limited edition um, series of prints of these particular pieces available for purchase through Contemporary Art Gallery. Um, I can share the link to that. Um, and other work, I. Um, I do have a few other prints on that same website as well that are available. Um, otherwise I do, um, my sales are usually direct or um, yeah, you can reach me through my, through Instagram, through um, my website. Um, so that's another avenue for sure. All right, thank you so much, Didi. And mm -hmm. Eugene, how about you? I guess um, we're gonna be looking forward to seeing a publication in the future. Funny that you mentioned that because during the pandemic, it gave me the time to actually write on a manuscript or poetry I was working on. So I have it, but I'm just editing it. But that's as far as I went. I didn't think about purchasing or selling because I think that would uh, take away from the creativity. So I wanted to finish the work and then explore the avenues and see how I get it out there. Okay, so everybody stay tuned. There will be a poetry book coming out by Eugene Elera. Elira in the near future. Um, all right, so I think if we don't have any more questions, that brings our fourth artist talk for collecting COVID in the diaspora to a close. I would like to thank all of our artists for joining us tonight. Thank you for being such a part of a really um, energetic and interesting conversation. Thank you to our audience for joining us and for participating and being so open to um, asking lots of questions um, that really had us thinking as well. So again, please go to the Museums Association of the Caribbean website to see the online exhibition where you'll see all of these artists work and more, and also stay tuned for the final artist talk that's going to be happening in November, if I have that correct. So just keep an eye out um, mark your calendars and we'll see you at that talk in November. So good night, everybody, or good afternoon, depending on where you are. And thank you so much.